ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Freedom Report podcast. My special guest today is Catherine Timpf. She's a reporter at National Review Online and a frequent guest on Fox News. She's broken many important news stories exposing how politically correct bullies are curtailing personal liberty. Kat, welcome to the show. Hi. Hey, good to see you. So, Ms. Timpf, your most recent column deals with California's new affirmative consent laws. Your piece is called, Women Are Too Weak to Say No to Sex. Now, is that just in my case, or do women who have a problem saying no to men everywhere? Well, uh, it's funny. A lot of people who didn't realize the piece was a satire got really outraged. And I got <laughs> a lot of really, really angry emails saying, well, you know, what are you thinking? You know, all that kind of stuff. But uh, obviously, uh, the whole point is these laws saying that, you know, it's not just no means no. It's It's got to be yes means yes mm-hmm. is kind of misogynist in a way because mm-hmm. it's saying that women would be too scared to actually be able to say what they are or are not comfortable with. Right. And so what we're dealing with here is, um, a sort of new legal environment that we're setting everybody up in where it's they're changing the standards of evidence in such a way that they're they're sort of taking away women's agency, right? They're assuming that women can't give consent. It's it's mostly deals with whether or not they're intoxicated. Is that is that about right? It it does, but it's actually totally has to be an affirmative yes. So it it used to be if it's, it's you say no or if someone's not able to say yes, um or not able to say no rather. Now it just kind of assumes that women are always able or not able to say yes. They're always, you know, incapable of saying no. I mean, Mm -hmm. it gets so confusing. Basically, I feel like these are the kind of things that you can count on people to figure out for themselves. You already can't have sex with somebody if they say no or if they're incapacitated. Mm -hmm. But going further than this, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of like it also gives the school the incentive to get guys in trouble because... If the you know the Department of Education doesn't say says they're not trying hard enough, then the Department of Education gets to keep a bunch of their money. Mm-hmm. So, so this is kind of um, happening not just in California, but uh, they uh, there was a big piece that came out yesterday in the Globe where 28 Harvard law professors wrote that the standards of conviction for students similar to the ones in California they go way too far. Uh, they're using this new standard. They're calling the, they call it the preponderance of evidence standard. Right to go after students. Um, what is the preponderance of evidence? What does that mean? And and uh, how does that sort of apply to uh, what we're talking about here? Yeah, basically, if the school, which, by the way, I don't know how anybody thinks they should be conducting rape investigations. I feel like that's something the police should be doing and not the school. Mm-hmm. So it says, you know, I think that the girl has more evidence than the guy that she didn't s- say yes in California's case or that she said no or she was drunk in other cases. Um, then they can punish the guy whoever they want. They can expel him. And then obviously, you know, if you get expelled for being a rapist, then, you know, being expelled is probably the worst of your, or the least of your problems in that case. Now, George Will is in trouble because he was, he basically said in a piece that being a sexual assault victim is becoming a coveted status on campus. What did you think about those remarks? Uh, I, 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 you know, it's, it's so weird because it's, it's stopping from being, you know, you know, trying to stop rapes and it's trying to like almost convince people they were raped, even if they think they weren't, you know, like if you look at this one in five statistic, it's actually totally bogus. It's based on two colleges and the things that they consider sexual assault are are if you've had sex, if you're drunk or if somebody tries to forcibly kiss you or things that I'm sorry, just not sexual assault. I don't want people to be like asking, Hey, is it okay if I kiss you every time? I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever want anyone to kiss me after that. And I feel like a lot of people probably agree with me there. Uh, yes. Uh, and you know, it's this weird. is, it is weird cat. And it's so, <laughs> it's so hard to talk about this. I mean, just from a journalistic perspective, it's not pretty to talk about the, the type of ways that we engage in courtship because mm-hmm. there, there, there's no clinical way to uh, to apply as rules to the to how courtship works. Because sometimes you know consent can be withdrawn at a moment's notice, of course, and you have to be able to be sensitive to understand, like you know, when someone is you know pulling away from you. And you know what? I I, I sympathize with people, of course, with people who have been raped, and I sympathize with people who are confused and make signals. I'm not trying to just you know take the guy's side because they're being picked on in this situation. I do understand that like there need to be there need to be some clear rules about how how you know people can be protected against these kinds of crimes but it feels as if the government is trying to punish one gender or put one gender on the defensive in this and it, it uh, I, I think that that's where it's a lot of the hostility 
comes from is because it, it, it appears to come from this idea that, uh, as you stated, that one gender is superior to the other because women can't really give consent uh, under these circumstances. Women are too weak. It's sort of strange how they have how we have these defenders of the of women. Uh, who are supposed to be empowering women when they're sort of doing the opposite. Isn't that what you see here too? Right. Everybody talks about how this can be dangerous for men on campuses having these kind of laws, and I agree with that, but I feel like what a lot of people miss is how this is also kind of a misogynist law, Mm -hmm. saying if a woman doesn't say yes, that doesn't mean or then then you can't do it because, you know, she can't just say no if she doesn't want to. A woman couldn't possibly handle just saying no or I'm not comfortable unless a man asks her. I I, I don't understand how suddenly that's feminism. I Mm -hmm. feel like it's the opposite. I feel like that's a misogynist idea. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, one of the unforeseen side effects, and there always are to laws like this, the negative side effects of this has been that men are now feeling pressured to record evidence that their encounter was consensual. You know, there have been cases in which men have been exonerated because women who testified that they were coerced into sexual activity actually um, were revealed to be lying because when the next day, they maybe they had an orgy or something, and they go to court or, or whatever, they try to take this person to court, the guy has been recording them. So do you see um, more negative side effects like this happening in the future if they keep pushing these types of laws? There could be. I, I have no idea what all the negative side, of, not side effects would be. I, I would probably be nervous about it. I just can't imagine how it would even change, though, if it's already no means no or yes means yes. We're going to have – I think what's really scary about it is the uh, preponderance of the evidence thing because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's very easy just based on whether this, this dean or these people at the school who have no training in mm-hmm. investigating criminal anything will say, you know what, I think I believe her, and the next thing you know, the dude's life is ruined. Yeah. So I think that's, that's a scary thing. And the yes means yes as opposed to no, no means no is just offensive because I don't know why anybody would think that – I or any other woman wouldn't be able to just say, hey, this is what I'm comfortable with, this is not what I'm comfortable with, without needing the government to guide me through it and, and you know, kind of, it's kind of a humiliating law for me, I think. Now, now get this, there was um, this new application that was developed that I believe the Apple Store may have rejected by now, but it was basically an affirmative consent app, and what it did was... I saw know, that. You did, yeah, so basically for our listeners who don't know, uh, you log into the application, you um, have another, uh, the woman has her own ID. She has to answer these a series of questions about whether or not she's intoxicated. And if she is intoxicated to a certain level, she has to say, if she's intoxicated to a certain point, they'll say, okay, I'm still good to go. But if they've had over a certain amount of alcohol, it's going to give the man a note saying she does not have the, the right or the power to make this decision for herself. She's too intoxicated. Is there such a thing as too intoxicated? One and and two. What do you think about applications like this, Kat? I don't know. I'd rather have a phone than I don't know the government. I mean, I don't really know. If, if you want to have that app and be like, I want my phone to get to decide when I have sex, and I guess that's your own weird <laughs> thing. And you, I don't know. But <laughs> but I, I mean, I I just feel like in general the, the government needs to stay out of it, and the schools need to not be investigating rape cases unless they're going to start investigating murder cases and mm-hmm. all other kinds of cases. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and also gives this idea that college rapes, when someone is raped, are different than when anybody else gets raped, which is, is not. I mean, we're just infantilizing women with this. We're infantilizing college students with this. Uh, these people are adults, and I think that they should be having sex like adults, and they know how to handle that like adults. And Camille Paglia, she's always trolling the feminists, but she wrote this piece recently about how um, feminism is infantilizing women, and in a right. and, um, she sort of alluded to the this broader topic that people are discussing about how because uh, people of our generation, millennials uh, and such, haven't really had any great war or any sort of great you know discord in our society, that we've sort of gotten, uh, we've all sort of been. Um, coddled so much that we don't know how to defend ourselves and we sort of reject um, basic self-defense measures because we think that the world is a safe place to be. And uh, when she was writing this piece, it was basically alluding the idea that women on campus think that they're invincible. And I wonder if that doesn't sort of contribute to the problems when you try and say, oh, well, we need to teach women common sense rules like, you know, how to carry pepper spray or some, learn self-defense. And they go, no, we just need to... Rape te- culture. Yeah, rape yeah. culture. We just need to teach men not to rape. I mean, what do you think about this mentality? 
Yeah, what I think is I don't think the reason we have a problem with the rape is because there are really nice dudes out there that just don't know they're raping people. I mean, what an idiotic idea. Mm -hmm. I feel like people are getting raped because there are bad guys out there that will do that. Mm -hmm. And it's not they're suddenly going to say, oh, it's a yes means yes instead of no means no. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, now I'm not going to be raping people anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. it's it's completely misses the problem here. It's it's insulting to everybody to think that these kind of laws could do any good. So apparently there's a statue um, mm-hmm. that is supposed to be removed. It's from the iconic photo of uh, World War II where a sailor is kissing a woman, and some people are saying this is a rape statue. You know, right. it's like a sexual assault mm-hmm. statue because right. he grabbed the woman and kissed her, but she didn't have consent. I mean, come on, the cat. Like, what's going on here? I mean, who? What kind of people are t- are, are seriously doing this? Uh, French feminists. Uh, I mean, I, I even I even talked to my papa about this. He, you know, he was he was alive in the end of the war. He was saying everyone was running around the street and kissing everybody, and uh, you know the woman never complained. Right? They're, they're not clear on who the woman is, but and any of the ones that it's being considered for, you know, being her, has remained friends with the guy and and never complained. But so it's again feminists, so-called feminists, saying that a woman in a situation can't even know on her own what is and is not appropriate for herself, what it, she is and is not comfortable sexually. Mm. Again, not saying that if the woman was uncomfortable, she could say something. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's just looking around for things to be upset about, which is becoming a victim is the opposite of empowering. And it's, it's just gotten to the point where it doesn't even make sense to me. Catherine Tim for the National Review. You're working on a lot of big stories all the time. Anything exciting or juicy you can share with our listeners? I'm writing, I'm writing a lot. A lot more about about feminism. Just had one about Obama and, and his Twitter and how it's just all. Uh, I know he doesn't run it, but whoever does run it sounds just like him. Talks about climate change, minimum wage, nothing about uh, ISIS, Ebola, anything like that going on. So, uh, okay, so we're not yeah. dealing with the serious issues. All right. right. Well, Catherine, we really appreciate your time today. You have a great day. Thanks. You too.